So this is part two of the first settings to adjust in Reaper 7. Now let's take a look at our preferences. Control P on the PC or Command Comma on the Mac. And that opens up our preferences dialog. And if we choose our project, right over here, when creating new projects, Reaper can use a project file as a template. So if you create one and set it up how you prefer to work, you could browse and choose that project. And every time you create a new project in Reaper, it's going to use that file as a template to start from and continue working with it. And we could also choose the option to prompt to save a new project. So every time you create a new project, it's going to ask us to save it and where to save it to, which is kind of helpful to make sure you save your projects before you start working with them. But this is off by default. Now in Reaper 7, they added another panel to the preferences right here for backups. This section over here is what happens when we back up our files or hit save multiple times. This is what's set up by default with this first option, saving a backup of our old project file with the extension each time a save is performed. And this version, which is also off by default, will create one big file with all our backups in it. But the default is this version right here, which will save one file every time we hit save with a timestamp in each. This way you know when you hit save, if you accidentally erase something or had a crash. You can go back to that timestamp based on the name of the file. And these are also on by default, save timestamped backups to a backups project directory. This will keep all the backups in a folder within your project folder, keeping it all nice and neat, as you'll see. Then this option limits the backups to most recent, and by default, it's set to 50 copies. You could change that to any number you want or base it on unique days. So if you only want to save about a month's worth of backups, set it to 30 days, but it defaults to 50 copies. And again, it's in a separate folder, nice and neat in your project folder. Now the section over here is not turned on by default. This is used for autosave, which is different from a backups where autosave will automatically backup whether we hit save or not. So it'll backup periodically based on a time we set up. You can keep that file in the same directory, but I prefer to put it, if you're going to turn this on, and you probably should, right here in a separate timestamped directory. We can give it a name, like auto backup, and Reaper will create a separate folder for the auto backups. So they're not confused with these backups. Then we can set it up again to limit based on 50 recent copies or unique days, copies for all projects or unique days for all projects. I like to keep it on this one and 50 is pretty good. Then we can set down here the interval or how often it saves. I like to keep it at five minutes, but you could set it at any value you want. So now every five minutes, Reaper's going to save a backup, even if you forget to hit save. And we could do it when not recording, when stopped, or anytime. I usually choose when not recording or when stopped. This way it doesn't back up while you're in the middle of an important take. So I usually choose this one. But like I said, this autosave is off by default. But I like to set it up like this, so my project folder looks like this. Here's my project file. Here's the media or my audio in a separate folder. Here are the backups every time I hit save. And here are the auto backups that are saved automatically, which are created every five minutes and are in a separate folder that are timestamped so we can easily find which one we want. Once again, it keeps our project folder organized and very neat. With just the project file out here, not in a folder. And right over here are the track send defaults. By default, when we create a new track, let's create one. Reaper puts the volume of that track at 0 dB. If you want to work with more headroom and start a bit lower, we could change it to any value we want. So if we set it to minus 6, apply it, and create a new track, it starts off at minus 6. 
So all our tracks will start off a bit lower than zero dB, based on what we set up over here. But the default is zero. Now down over here, we could choose to put our track into record when we create it. So if we choose this and apply it, let's create a new track, and it starts out in record. This is really useful if you're recording a lot of MIDI and you want to start recording right away. So when we create new tracks, they're already in record. But this is off by default, but we could turn it on right here if you want it. And we could also set up a record configuration for new tracks. So by default, monitoring input is on. So we're going to hear our audio or our MIDI through our track. But if you're using an interface with zero latency and you're monitoring through that software, you might want to turn this off. And then when you create new tracks, they start off with monitoring off. You can still change it later, but the default is what we set up in here. Turn it on, turn on, tape auto style, or turn it off. But the default is monitor input. So we can hear our audio or MIDI through our track. We could also change the recording modes, record the input, or MIDI, overdub, replace, or set up the input in advance. If you tend to use input one, two, three, or four, you just choose it right here, and by default, every new track you create is gonna start off with that input, which is also useful for MIDI. I could set it up with my USB MIDI keyboard, apply it, and then every new track I create starts out in record with my USB MIDI keyboard set up as the input. Now there's one other option I want to show you under the record configuration. If we go down here to the bottom, by default, we could automatically record arm our tracks when selected. So if we choose this and apply it, and again, create a new track, by default, it's in record, and the record button has an A in it, meaning when this track is selected, the track will be in record. When it's not selected, it comes out of record, which is really helpful for dealing with multiple MIDI tracks at a time. Of course, it'll also work with audio tracks. Let's say I create another, it automatically goes into record, and instead of having to take this track out of record each time, I could just select this track, and this track is in record, and this track comes out of record. So I could select this track, for doing our piano or strings, and go back to this one and work on bass, and any track we select at the time is gonna automatically go into record, while taking the other ones out of record. But by default, this option is off. So if you want that behavior on every track you create, just turn it on down here. Now because this topic is pretty long, I've cut it into four parts. Check out part three next. Bingo boys, let's go.